Hi guys, this is Life Meet Lightning, and today we're going to talk about scientific notation, why we need it, and how it's used. This video is also going to segue into engineering notation in the next video, which is what we actually use in electronics. But in this video, we're going to have some practice examples. We're going to learn how to use scientific notation so that we can understand engineering notation. So stick around, and I'm going to show you the numbers that make the lightning go. Okay, so why do we need scientific notation? Well, as a cheesy stick figure cartoon earlier illustrated, it can be really hard to work with very large and very small numbers. And unfortunately, electronics involves a lot of both. So to start it with scientific notation, let's look at a very large number. You may remember working with powers of 10, but we'll recap real quick. The number 10,000 is a product of 10s. By that, I mean we can multiply 10 by itself a certain number of times to come up with 10,000. To demonstrate this, we'll multiply 10 by itself three times. You'll notice that doing this involves using the number of 10 four times. We call this 10 to the power of four using an exponent as shown. It simply means we are multiplying with 10 four times. The proper way to express the number 10,000 in scientific notation would be 1 times 10 to the power of 4. You'll remember that 1 times anything always equals the same thing, so it's kind of a placeholder in this case. If you try to write the number 20,000 in scientific notation, this format becomes a little more obvious. So, proper scientific notation format follows a convention of having a single digit multiplied by 10 to a certain power. In this way, we can express extremely large numbers using just a few digits. For instance, 100 trillion can be expressed as 1 times 10 to the power of 14. We don't have to write all those zeros. Pro tip, you'll notice that the number of zeros in 100 trillion corresponds with the power of 10 that we used. So there are 14 zeros in 100 trillion. Now, what about a number like 1,200? We can express the number 1,200 in scientific notation by using a decimal point. This still follows the scientific notation convention that we multiply a single digit by a power of 10. By this, I mean there is one single digit to the left of the decimal point. You can have any number of digits to the right of the decimal point. So now that we've looked at doing it the hard way, what do you say we learn how to do it the easy way? Yes! I just mentioned a second ago how the number for the exponent for the power 10 that we used in 100 trillion corresponded with the number of zeros in 100 trillion. And if you were clever, you might have noticed that that didn't quite work out for the number 1200 because we only have two zeros in 1200 and we have a power 10 with an exponent of 3. It did, however, correspond with the number of places that we moved the decimal over to write the number in scientific notation. So that's right. All we need to do is move the decimal place over. Okay, at this point I'm going to put a little practice sheet up. If you'd like to go through it, and I would highly encourage you to do so, go ahead and pause the video and I'll put the answers up after a few seconds. If you'd like some more practice, I am working on a website, and in the future I'll update the descriptions on this video below with a link to that website if you'd like to get some more practice. So how'd you do? Scientific notation really isn't that hard when you think in terms of just moving the decimal place over. So we've looked at large numbers so far, but what about small numbers? In electronics, we work with a lot of really small numbers. So let's go ahead and take a look at scientific notation using small numbers now. Let's start with one one thousandth in decimal form. You may have already guessed it, but all we need to do is move the decimal the opposite direction, and we express this power of 10 with a negative sign like so. Notice we're still following the convention of having a single digit to the left of the decimal and then multiplying it by a power of 10. Now, just to be thorough, you might remember that negative one in the exponent is equivalent to one-tenth. We are actually multiplying by tenths now. Still powers of 10, but we are getting smaller instead of bigger. Okay, let's do one more conversion of a very small number. We'll convert one one trillionth into scientific notation. Notice we have the same exponent as before, it's just negative instead of positive. So to recap, all we need to do to convert to scientific notation is move the decimal. 
We move the decimal to the left for positive exponents and to the right for negative exponents. Easy peasy. Let's try a few more practice examples. Again, I'd encourage you to pause the video and work through these. I'll show the answers after a few seconds. Okay, moving in decimals, super easy, right? This stuff's not too hard, guys. We're one step closer to world domination. So I considered covering mathematical operations using scientific notation in this video, you know, such as addition, multiplication. However, the point of this channel is electronics, and as I mentioned earlier in this video, we don't use scientific notation in electronics, we use engineering notation. And the whole reason we've been talking about scientific notation is so that we can understand engineering notation. So I opted to not cover mathematical operations using scientific notation in this video, but if you're curious, I'll put a card above or a link in the description below to some other resources. You can, you can sure look into that and learn how to do that if you want. However, we're focusing on electronics and the next video, we're gonna talk about engineering notation. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe, stick around, check that out uh, like comment if you got questions leave a comment down below I'd be happy to answer them this is life meet lightning here to bring a little lightning into your life